Good morning, students. Our next topic is round robin scheduling algorithm. Our next topic is round robin scheduling algorithm. This algorithm also comes under preemptive scheduling algorithm. This algorithm also comes under preemptive scheduling algorithm. Okay, we will see this. Okay. So here, so here we will be given the time quantum EQ. So here we have the list of processes. 1 to 6, we have the arrival time, burst time. In addition to this, we will be given the time quantum. Here we, in some cases we call it as time slice. Or in some cases we call it, uh, we call it as time bound. Okay, the time quantum, time quantum or time bound or time slice or simply time. Okay, or time interval or simply interval like that in different modes they may give in the question. Okay, so here in round robin scheduling algorithm we will be given a time slice or a time bound or a time quantum. Here it was given as two units of time. Okay, it was given as two. Time quantum is two. Means at a time a process will be executed for at most 2 seconds only. At most, not at least, at most 2 seconds means that particular process may be executed for 1 second or 2 seconds. If it is already executed, we don't execute that. Means it is zero. That's why a process will be executed by the CPU for at most 2 seconds only. Okay? Right. So here, before we draw the Gantt chart, okay, so here before we draw the Gantt chart, before we draw the Gantt chart, we will draw the we will draw the Q. We will have the Q. Okay. We have to draw the Q. Okay. So, so first at time interval 0, at time interval 0, what are the process available? At time interval 0, only the process available is P1. Okay, P1. So here we have right P1. Process P1 is available. Okay, process P1 is available at the time interval 0. It has to be executed for 2 units of time or 2 seconds. Why? Because the time quantum is 2. So the burst time of process P1 is 4. But we will execute for only 2 seconds only. So P1 will be executed for 2 seconds. Okay. So the Q is P1. At 2 seconds, at 2 seconds, what are the processes available? P1, P2, P3. P1 is already there in the queue. So we have to enter P2, P3. So we will enter P2, P3. Right? So P1 is already executed. So we will cut it. P1 is already executed. So after execution of P1, the time interval is 2. So, what are the process available here? P2, P3 are available. Okay, P2, P3 are available. Okay, so that's why we have written P2, P3. Okay, after P2, P3, again we will have, again we will have P1. Okay, okay, right. So, you, you, you should not confuse here. Why? Because, so, First, at time interval 0, only process available is P1. P1 is executed for 2 seconds. At time, at time interval 2, when the time is 2, the available process is P1, P2, P3. We have written P2, P3. P1 is also there. That's why we have repeated P1. This P1 already we have uh, explored this P1 at time interval 0. At time interval 2, we have 3 processes available. P2, P3, P1. That's what we have written. P2, P3, P1. Okay. So next we have, we should go in the particular order. So next we have P2. See if you see the queue, P1 is already there. Next P2. 
So P2 is executed. So P1 is already executed for 2 seconds. That's why the remaining time is 2. Okay. Next we are executing P2. P2 should also be executed for 2 seconds. That is 4. So here also it is 3. Okay. So at time interval 4, at time interval 4, what are the paths available? P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Okay, so P2, P3, P1. So next we have P4, P5. P4, P5. Newly processed. P4, P5. P4, P5. Processor available. So P2 is explored. So again we have to write P2. Why? Because at time interval 4, what are the available process? P1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 3, 4, 5. P2 is not there. So we write P2. Okay. So now, next in the queue, P1 is over, P2 is over, next P3. We have to execute P3. So P3 is to be executed. For how many seconds? 6 seconds. So, 4 plus 2, 6. Okay. So now it is executed for 2 seconds, now it will become 0. Thereby P3 is over. Okay. So at time interval 6, what are the process available? P6 is available. P6 is available. If you see P1, 2, 4, 5, 6. 3 is already executed. That's why we, we will not write P3 again. We will not write P3 again. Why? Because P3 is already completed its execution. That is the reason why we don't uh, write P3 again. Okay, don't get confused. See, P3 is explored. P3 is used. P3 is executed. For as usual, 2 seconds. Its burst time is 2 seconds. That's why P3 is completed its execution. Okay. So the remaining 5 are available and we have, we have written all the 5 in the queue. So as per the queue, next we have P1. Next we have P1. P1 will be executed for 2 seconds. That is 6 plus 2, 8. So now this will become 0 and P1 is over. Okay. So all the process are available and we don't write P1 again because P1 is already completed. Its execution is completed. So we need not write it again. So next, P1 is over. Next, we have P4. We will write P4. P4 will be executed for only one second. I told you. So the time, since the time quantum is 2, any process can be executed by the CPU for at most 2 seconds. Not at least, at most means maximum 2 seconds. So here since its burst time is only 1 second, we will execute process P4 for only 1 second. So now this will become 0. So process P4 is over. This will be executed for 1 second. 8 plus 1, 9. Okay, so P4 is over. Again, we will not add P4. Why? Because P4 is already executed. Next, we have P5. Next, we have P5. So, P5. Its burst time is 6 seconds. But we will execute it for 2 seconds only. So, the remaining is 4. Okay. So, next, again, we will add P5 at the end. P5 is already over. We will add P5 here. <coughs> We will add P5 at the end. Why? Because uh, here at 11 units of time we have 3 processes available P2, P5, P6. So P2, P6, P5 we have added just now. Next we have P2, P2, P2 will be executed for 2 seconds, 11 plus 2, 13. So here still 1 second is there. So P2 is executed. So we have P6, P5, again P2 will be there. Again P2 will be there. <coughs> so next we have P6. P6, its first time is 3 seconds. So P6. Its first time is 3 seconds. We will execute for 2 seconds. So the remaining is 1. So P6 is finished. Again we will add P6 here. Next we have P5. P5 is to be executed for P5. P5 is to be executed for 2 seconds. 15 plus 2, 17. So here it is 2. 
Okay. So P5 is finished and P5 will be added. P5 will be added. Okay. Next we have P2. P2 is only one second more. So we will write, we'll write P2. P2 for 17 plus 1 18. And here it will become 0. And here x question is over. P2 is finished. Now you are adding P2 again. Why? Because P2 is finished its execution. Next we have P6. P6 also it needs only one second. So P6 only one second. That is 19. It will become 0. P6 is over. Next we will not add P6. Why? Because P6 is finished its execution. Next we have only process left is P5. So P5 takes 2 seconds. So we will write P5. So 19 plus uh, 2, 21. <coughs> so it will become 0. <coughs> so <coughs> we have finished drawing the Q as well as the cat chart. So now we will write the values. Now we will write the values. So if we write the values now see. Process P1 is completed, it completed its execution at 8. P2, 18. P3, 6. P4, 9. P5, 21. P6, 19. Okay, coming to the turnaround time, we already know that it's the difference between completion time and arrival time. So, 8 minus 0, 8, 8, 17, 4, 6, 17, 13. Coming to the waiting time, it's the difference between turnaround time and boss time. 8 minus 4, 4, 17 minus 5, 12, 4 minus 2, 2. 6 minus 1, 5, 17 minus 6, 11, 13 minus 3, 10. Then the response time it is nothing but the start time, difference between start time and arrival time. Start time, arrival time. The start time is 0, P1 started 0, arrival time is 0, 0 minus 0, 0. P2, 2 minus 1, 1. P3, 4 minus 2, 2. <coughs> P4, 8 minus 3. 5 P5 9 minus 4 5 P6 it is 13 minus 6 it is 7 here also what we do is here also we will calculate the average turnaround time as well as average waiting time average turnaround time we will add all these divided by 6 since we have uh, used 6 process the waiting time is also the same. Okay. So here in round robin scheduling algorithm, the important thing is drawing the Gantt chart along with Q. Here we have to consider two factors. They are nothing but one is time quantum, time quantum plus arrival time. We will consider, we have to keep in mind of these two things. One is time quantum and the other is arrival time. So along with that, we have to draw the Q along with the Gantt chart. Okay? Right? Okay. Thank you.